I want to start this video by saying I know some people have a problem with understanding evolution by natural selection. This video is an attempt to show an accurate summary of the process of as it has taken place on this planet that led to the diversity of life we see today. The resources used to produce this video will be listed in the description and I recommend you check the papers and websites provided to confirm these conclusions and gain a deeper understanding for yourselves. Since evolution is a process that has been acting on all life since it started, I will start with the Cambrian Explosion because that event is relatively well documented and shows many examples of diversity. However, there are some notes on important events that happened before that. I will mostly be referencing Wikipedia's page, Timeline of Evolutionary History of Life, for this section. Photosynthesis appeared approximately 3.4 billion years ago. As Citation 12 talks about, there were black coral species that have features that lead scientists to believe they produced hydrogen gas for photosynthesis instead of oxygen, like purple sulfur bacteria of today. They generate ATP by using a proton gradient, see Crash Course Biology episodes 7 and 8, approximately 3 billion years ago photosynthesis that uses water as a reducing agent evolved, producing oxygen in the process. The Earth's oxygen content slowly rises, acting as a poison to many bacteria. Microbes also had started to move onto land by this time, as we, as we see in Wikipedia's page reference 14. Approximately 2.5 billion years ago, oxygenic photosynthesis seriously altered the Earth's atmosphere. By then, the Earth had also cooled enough to allow for plate tectonics to start and the continental shelves we know today to form. By 1.85 billion years ago, Eukaryotes started to appear, which are cells that have a nucleus. Sexual reproduction begins around 1.2 billion years ago. See reference 19. Showing a paper on a species, which is a type of red algae, which use spores to reproduce, which is beneficial in the sense of increasing the adaptability of a species. 850 million years ago, some scientists believed the entire Earth might have been covered in the glaciation event, often called Snowball Earth. There are many documentaries on YouTube about this hypothesis, if you wish to find out more. About 630 million years ago, that glaciation event was over, allowing conditions to return to a more favorable environment, and by 600 million years ago, atmospheric oxygen had accumulated to the point where the ozone layer could form, helping to stop high-energy radiation from the sun. Finally, about 580 to 542 million years ago, the first large complex organisms begin to appear in the fossil record. And we have arrived in the Cambrian Explosion, where life begins to seriously diversify and all major present phyla emerge. These fossils show the kind of complexity of organisms coming into this era. Note the closely spaced branches that were probably ciliated to move the organism around. This figure shows the phylogeny of the species, however, these remain highly controversial due to a lack of evidence being collected as of yet. Moving forward, out of the Cambrian, we enter the Neoven, and here we find plants that are first starting to show vascular tissues like xylem and phloem for carrying water throughout the plant. This is a feature we see in all trees and almost all things we could call plants today. Now let's talk about complex life transitioning from the ocean to land and even in some cases back again. Early amphibians were the bridge from ocean to land creatures. Some fish had developed multi-digit fins for walking along the sea floor. This is from Amphibian's Wikipedia page. Uh, some others that used to swim through the ocean had adapted to live in shallow river swamp-like areas, as you might see in the Everglades in Florida. These creatures begin to develop lungs, as sometimes these pools could become isolated due to large tides and they could become oxygen depleted. Two examples of amphibians that lived during this period whose skeletons are examined in a paper which has a link in the description. From amphibians, reptiles evolved around 310 to 320 million years ago, being scaled, laying hard shelled eggs, and having an ectothermic metabolism. The first reptiles were living in the time when the Earth was largely covered by swamps called the Carboniferous. Footprints in Nova Scotia dated to 315 million years ago match fossils attributed to anomalous. Very soon after reptiles emerged, two major populations branched. One, Synapsida, which mammals are descended from. They only have one hole in the roof of their skull behind each eye. And Sauropsida, 
also forms two branches or groups. One, Parareptilia, which also has one hole for each eye and a second hole. The other, Diapsida, which possess the second hole and a third hole located higher on the skull. The function of these holes is to lighten the skull and give the jaw muscles more room to move. Reptiles split into a vast diversity of other species, such as mammals with the rise of plesiosaurs, which includes such groups as cesiosaurs, which branched into euplesiosaurs, which branched again into theropsids, which in turn branched to mammals. The difference between these types of creatures is clearly seen in the skull with the bones that become the mammalian ear bones from the reptilian jaw bones. These bones show a clear step-by-step -step change. While these are all different, it's not like one has to give birth to the next. These changes slowly took effect in response to some natural stimulus. The populations probably just became separated enough, if not by distance, then by some other factor, and changed along separate paths. The children of each generation are different from both parents and slight advantages persisted in their given environment. Some reptiles became mammal-like, some became more dinosaur-like, and some dinosaurs became more bird-like. Mammals took on a smaller size while dinosaurs were still walking around, and while it's true dinosaurs did experience a devastating asteroid strike and many species did die off, we can still trace dinosaurs to birds through many species such as Eoraptor, Herosaurus, Ceratosaurus, Allosaurus, Confuciosaurus, Sonornithosaurus, Microraptor, Archaeopteryx, Brahonivus, Comsognathus, Sinosauropteryx, Proteryopteryx, Caudioptryx, Velociraptor, Sinoventor, Bipiosaurus, Sonornus, and Absarophus, to name a few. Many of these dinosaurs have feathers, and some could even fly. There are several reasons that feathers would have evolved, such as sexual selection, like for example the peacock today, or gliding in the case of Archaeopteryx. See the Talk Origins page, all about Archaeopteryx FAQ. There are fossils that show that the evolution of feathers on the hind legs of dinosaurs, that show the evolution of feathers on the hind legs of dinosaurs. See paper see the link in the description for hind wings in basal birds and the evolution of leg feathers. Many examples of the class of fossils known as Archaeopteryx, examples of the plumage on Microraptor and why it evolved that way, as well as a reconstruction of what it would have looked like. Again, in the description see reconstruction of Microraptor and the evolution of iridescent plumage. All of these are great evidence that fit the predictions made by evolution in that there are small changes between generations of a species that lead to massive change, such as the development of flight, that leaves us off on the time scale at roughly 100 million years ago.